global events ranging from Russian Federation's war in the Ukraine to the Houthi attacks in the Red Sea directly impact the lives of millions of Africans. Terrorism, poverty, food insecurity, climate change, and mass migration shatter African lives. These factors sow the seeds of violent extremism and Russian exploitation across entire regions of the continent. AFRICOM's campaign revolves around central themes of ensuring strategic access, countering threats to the homeland and U.S. interests, preparing for and responding to crisis, and lastly, bolstering our allies and partners. This campaign places our African partners at the center, achieving positive change by executing African-led and U.S.-enabled operations focused on our shared objectives. In today's dynamic environment, our whole of government partners require appropriate resourcing. I strongly advocate for our State Department and USAID partners to receive the resources they need to guarantee our combined success. I would also like to highlight a campaign that benefits from our Congress, which supports the African Center of Strategic Studies, which is celebrating its 25th anniversary. In Africa, modest investments and resources go a long way towards achieving our national security interests. Africa faces many challenges, but also offers even more opportunities. With our African partners at the forefront, reinforced by our efforts and the efforts of our allies, we will continue to gain ground towards achieving lasting stability, security, and prosperity on this crucial continent. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to be here today, and I look forward to answering your questions. Chair Langley, can you talk about why we have why we we care about what's happening in Africa right now? I mean, what, if you tell the American taxpayer, what, why are we there? Why are we spending the money we're spending there? Thanks for that question, Thanks for that question uh, Senator. Uh, for access and influence. I'd say that a number of countries are at the tipping point of actually being captured by the Russian Federation as they are uh, uh, spreading some of their false narratives across uh, Libya. And from a strategic answer piece, access influence across the whole Maghreb, that is NATO's southern flank. We need to be able to have, maintain access and influence across the uh, Maghreb from Morocco all the way to Libya. Ch uh, excuse me, the PRC and Russia are also remaining exploitative uh, where possible and coercive when necessary. They want that ground. They want power projection capabilities. So for the most part, uh, the rest of the continent uh, is also for mining concessions, whether it be gold or rare earth minerals. Both of them have a long-range plan, but I think at the accelerated uh, pace, the uh, Russian Federation is really trying to take over the, uh, Central Africa as well as the Sahel. The question arises, what are we doing in terms of information campaign to try to inform governments and the people of the, the dangers that these groups, not just Wagner groups, but other entities are posing? Chairman, thanks for that question, because uh, I would say the Russian uh, Federation's uh, narrative drowned out the U.S. governments in the past years. They were accelerant. The Russian Federation, not just through Wag uh, Wagner, uh, stoked a lot of the instability across the Sahel. They did this through misinformation, disinformation campaigns. So I see how we will, could uh, double down in our efforts is through our own information campaign, but matched with our assurance efforts, our assurance efforts across the whole of government, just not building military and security capacity, but all, all the, the story needs to be told about the successes of USAID and State Department collectively in all of our operations, activities, and investments. And that requires additional resources, I presume. Uh, yes, Chairman, it certainly does, especially in information operations. With respect to where we don't have ambassadors, I really appreciated both of you talking about a whole-of-government approach that you're doing in your areas of responsibility because, as you point out, there isn't a military solution in these countries. And I wanted to show this map. You can see by the pins where we do not have ambassadors in 
Africa, and also in Turkmenistan. So we have eight open missions in Africa. The African Union in Zimbabwe, Nigeria, the biggest, most populous country in Africa, Cabo Verde, Djibouti, where as Senator Wicker pointed out, uh, the Chinese have a base, Liberia, Somalia, Burundi, and Burkina Faso. Also do not have an ambassador in Turkmenistan and CENTCOM. So how important is it for us to have ambassadors in the countries where you're operating to help us move the missions that we have in these countries? I'd ask both of you to respond to that. Senator, it's, it's very essential that we have, especially with our whole of government approach. These, our African partners understand, understand that we're here to help them reach their overall uh, national goals of stability and security. But when we bring our assurance actions and our African campaign plan and say 3D, they said, okay, then why aren't we important enough to have an ambassador? And so it does uh, draw a strategic communication that uh, can be exploited and leveraged by the Russian Federation and the People's Republic of China. It is and certainly essential. Thank you. And I would point out that the PRC has ambassadors in all of those countries.